Uju, Wago Shindagu, Migazi and Dodem, Gazagasquaji Mekog, Indun Jaba. Today I'd like to share a few thoughts about cultural appropriation. A lot of people have questions about what's okay, what's not okay, who do you ask, and how do you know? It's a complicated topic and there are some gray areas that make it hard to navigate. Some things are easier to see than others. So for example, if someone is copying someone else's ceremony, if, for example, a non-native person is dressing up in you know, ceremonial regalia, if somebody is doing fake war chants, you know, that's pretty obvious, I think, to most people that that's some kind of cultural appropriation and it's not okay. And on the other side of the spectrum, there are all kinds of cultural sharing, especially around things like music and art, where it's very difficult to even identify from what culture a particular um, art form came. For example, in music, many different kinds of music have been influenced by many different cultures. And there's no way to say that one particular group owns it. It's different with ceremonial music um, or things that are very much embedded in a cultural practice or something like that. Uh, so some kinds of culture sharing and art sharing and things like that are wonderful and beautiful and to be, you know, supported and so forth. But in between are all these kinds of gray areas. Um, there are lots of non-native people writing books that have native characters. Um, sometimes questions come up about what kinds of cultural activities should I go to or participate in. And so there's no simple rule on this, but, but for the most part, if the activity that you're thinking about is indigenous-led, usually it's okay. There might be plenty of native people that I disagree with and plenty who would disagree with me. But if somebody's saying, hey, you know, we're having a gathering at my house, you are invited, please come. We want you to participate, eat some food with us and see what we're doing. Uh, that's very common. You know, people, you know, there are many different interracial marriages. Um, my wife is not native. And when we have, you know, have had a naming ceremony for one of the children, uh, first kill feast or something like that. Well, the native and non-native family comes to support, you know, the kids and they're invited. And because they're invited and not like running the ceremony or something like that, then that's okay. Uh, similarly, if somebody says, hey, we're having a powwow, we'd like you to come see some of what we're doing you're invited, you get to go, it's fine. You're not going to be offending somebody or causing, you know, causing a problem for yourself or anybody else. However, when there's something cultural or ceremonial and it's not native led, but it's native inspired, that's when we often run into trouble. So if it's a bunch of, you know, white folk running a sweat lodge ceremony and there are no native people there and they're doing kind of imagined ceremony or imagined community or something that they maybe saw or even participated in once uh, that does not you know give somebody authorization to be the cultural carrier or practitioner who is then sharing about our ways with other people that still doesn't resolve all of the questions that everybody has. There's been a, a trend or a movement as well, you know, even just in things like publishing books, giving talks, and making movies to say, you know, there have been a lot of non-native people who've made native themed movies and often they've gotten it wrong, even when they've been sympathetic whether it was Dances with Wolves, where there's a white guy better at being native than the natives, and there's still stereotypes about good natives and bad ones, or maybe a sympathetic treatment about how native people were treated in, you know, The Lone Ranger, but you still 
you know, have a white guy playing natives and so forth. And we're kind of moving away from that. And for the most part, there's so many native people who are hungry to share their stories in movies uh, and literature and in many other ways. There's no reason not to center native voices. So if you're working for organizations that are bringing in speakers, publishing books, doing movies, I encourage you to support and engage with authentic indigenous voices so that they can represent native communities and tell our stories from their many different perspectives. That doesn't mean that, you know, non-native people cannot engage with native-led works. For example, even putting a movie together, you're going to need lots of people from, you know, across the industry. And it's not reasonable to assume you can have a native person in every single capacity. But if native people are centered in the storytelling and native people uh, have the major acting roles for native characters, I think that resolves the issue and we can work across lines. When it comes to kind of everyday things like what should I use for my Halloween costume and, you know, things like that, I really believe that uh, Native people have often experienced double pains that are kind of contradictory, hypervisibility and invisibility, which both cause injury in different ways. And I do think that taking somebody's culture and trying to use it as a costume or something that's fetishized or exoticized like a Victoria's Secret model wearing a pretend feather headdress, um, it's taking things out of their cultural context and that also runs into the space of cultural appropriation. For example, eagle feathers in indigenous cultures are considered really sacred and in former times people really had to earn their eagle feathers through acts of service to the community. So if someone who has not really earned the right through cultural practices is displaying eagle feathers or a mockery of them, some dyed chicken feathers or something like that, it's really decontextualizing something that's special or sacred in that native space. And uh, that will also run somebody into hot water. When issues or topics come up and you're just not sure, one of the other things I'd really recommend is talking to some native people and saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Are there any potholes that I don't see? Are there things that I don't know? Are there cultural sensitivities or issues that I should be aware of? And that will help your decision making also to be native led rather than native inspired. Best of luck. Thanks for listening today. Miigwech. Thanks for watching today. I'm Anton Troyer. Let's keep in touch. I'm active on social media, and my website has lots of information on my books, speaking engagements, resources for the Ojibwe language, teachers, 